Hi, I am Dr. Sakya Mansoor and today I will discuss with you D. tenosynovitis. So, let's start. So, tenosynovitis injuries like a puncture of the finger by a rusty nail may result in infection of digital synovial sheaths. You could see this. This is this this is a digital synovial sheath. So let me enlarge it for you. Here it is get enlarged. Here you could see digital synovial sheath. Here this is the digital synovial sheath sheath of a tendon. So coming back, when the inflammation of the tendon and its synovial sheath takes place, this is called tenosynovitis. The digit gets swollen and movement gets painful. Here you could see again this these two tendons that will be focused right now: flexor digitorum superficialis and flexor digitorum profundus in the digital synovial sheaths. As the tendon of the second, third, and the fourth fingers almost always have separate synovial sheets, infection is commonly confined to infected finger. If the infection is left untreated, proximal ends of these sheets can be ruptured, thus allowing the infection to spread to the mid palmar space. You could see this uh, second, third, and fourth fingers. They have a separate uh, tendon sheet and uh, Otherwise, you could see this. This is the mid palmar space in yellow, and uh, follow the laser, and infection can spread to that if the uh, tendonitis is left um, untreated. As the snowmobile sheath of little finger is commonly continuous with the common flexor sheath, tenosynovitis in little finger can spread to common flexor sheath, and in this way, through the palm and carpal tunnel. To the anterior forearm draining into space between the pronated quadratus and the overlying flexor tendon, which is the perona space. So let's see that. What is the this is the common flexor sheath? Here you could see this is the common flexor sheath, and uh, this is the digital synovial sheath of the little finger. Let me make it, it's already clear, I know, but let it zoom. This is the synovial sheath of the fifth digit and it is commonly continuous with the common flexor sheath, which is the ulnar bursa. So infection of the this uh, little finger uh, will spread to this common flexor sheath, the ulnar bursa. Similarly, tenosynovitis in the thumb can spread via continuous synovial sheath of the flexor pollicis longus, the radial bursa. How far any infection can spread from fingers is dependent on variation in their connection with common flexor sheath. You also uh, see this, uh, um, you know, the space of perona. You could see this. These are the, um, uh, pro this is a pronated quadratus muscle, and these are the tendon passing over it. The space between them is called the um, space of perona, right? So this is the way with it. This is the flexor pollicis longus, and uh, as it is continuous, this infection in the palm, and that would be the uh, into the radiating into the radial bursa. Tendon of the extensor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis longus are in the same tendinous sheath in the dorsum of the wrist. Extreme friction of these tendons on their common um, sheath causes fibrous thickening of the sheath and stenosis of the osteofibrous. Tunnel. Excessive friction is a result of the repetitive forceful use of the hands during wringing, for example, squeezing water out of the clothes and gripping. This condition known as D. Corvain stenosynovitis, Corvain tenovaginitis, or stenosense, produces pain in the wrist that gets radiated proximally to the forearm and distally toward the thumb. You could see again these two muscles, the abductor pollicis longus and the extensor pollicis brevis. They're lying on the dorsal aspect, right? So, local tenderness is present over the common flexor sheath on the lateral side of the wrist. Thickening of a fibrous digital sheath on palmar aspect of the digit causes thick stenosis of the osteofibrous tunnel. 
the result of the repetitive forceful use of the fingers if the tendon of the flexor digitorum uh, profundus and flexor digitorum superficialis get enlarged proximal to the tunnel the person is unable to extend his finger on passive extension of the finger a snap is audible flexion produces yet another snap as the thickened tendon moves this condition is known as digital tenovaginitis tenosens trigger finger or snapping snapping finger so these conditions are related like the tenosynovitis decurvin tenosynovitis and also this trigger finger i have a separate video on trigger finger with the beautiful images so causes of decurvin tenosynovitis most common cause is chronic excessive use of the wrist. Repetitive movements day after day result in irritation and pain. One common movement that produces it is lifting a kid into a car seat. Another example is carrying heavy grocery bags by the handles. Other causes include a injury to the wrist or an inflammatory arthritis. So causes continue. You are more likely to have decorvin tenosynovitis if you are 40 years of age or older, you are a woman, you are a pregnant, and uh, hormonal changes in pregnancy can produce this. So if you are pregnant, you have more chances of this disease. You are involved in repetitive uh, hand and wrist movements. This is pretty common cause. You got your wrist injured, scar tissue may restrict the movement of your tendons. You have developed arthritis. So how would diagnose this decurvin tenosynovitis? The clinician can do a simple test for diagnosis of the disease. It is called Finkelstein test. First, you are to bend your thumb so it rests across your palm. You see the picture. You would just bend your uh, thumb so it should rest across the your palm. And uh, then you make a fist by closing your fingers over your thumb. Here you could see that you're making this fist, right? Then what to do? Last, you bend your wrist towards your little finger. Here you could see this wrist is bent over towards the little finger. If you feel tenderness or pain at base of your thumb, you have the decorvent, you know, synovitis. If the pain or tenderness is over here, base of the thumb, this is the decorvin tenosynovitis diagnosis. Other investigations like x-rays aren't required in diagnosing the condition. So treatment, it comprises applying ice or heat to the affected area, taking a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, for example, ibuprofen, motrin, edible, or naproxen. Avoiding activities which cause pain and swelling, especially avoid those which involve repetitive hand and wrist movements. Wearing a splint whole day for four to six weeks to rest your thumb and wrist. Giving steroid injections or a local anesthetic into the tendon sheath. These injections are very helpful and are used regularly. So treatment continues. And occupational therapist or physical therapist can show you how to modulate the way you move it can decrease the stress on your wrist they can also tell you exercises for strengthening your muscles most of the people improve after four to six weeks of the treatment they can use their hands and wrist without pain as the swelling gets settled so the treatment continues. The surgical treatment it requires when the decurvin tenosynovitis. You can require surgery if the case is severe or if other treatments are ineffective to relieve pain. During an outpatient surgery, the surgeon makes a small cut in the sheath around swollen tendons. This gives more room for tendons to move. After surgery, you will require to do physical therapy to make sure wrist and thumb stronger. This will help to avoid recurrence. As there is healing and return to the full strength, you will have normal use of your hand. So this is surgical treatment. And uh, how to live with decurvin tenosynovitis? Decurvin tenosynovitis is temporary 
it usually responds very well to treatment. It is important to treat the disease. If it is left untreated, it may permanently limit your movement or cause tendon sheet to burst. Once your symptoms get improved, work to prevent the condition from occurring again. So I thank you very much for being patient and listening to my um, uh, this um, lecture. Do subscribe and support my channel and spread it by sharing. Thank you very much. Goodbye.